Okay, so let's now flip the proposition on its head and talk about the weaknesses of the brand and does the opposition have its strategy right? So for example, if this is the unassailable, super strong brand that you're up against, do you think the opposition is attacking it at the right places? What is the opposition doing right, wrong? What is the Achilles heel of this brand if you were now devising the counter strategy? The only thing that you can devise at this point of time is rely either on the sudden emergence of a strong and shall we say somebody with a huge uh, up, upsurge of charisma. That's one possibility. The other thing which the opposition sadly is reduced to relying on is the boredom factor. That look, after a certain period of time, every brand begins to age. Yeah. This brand has revived itself for 13 but years. Some, as someone mentioned Coke. Coke hasn't really aged in that sense. It still Coke, is relevant. Coke so, today recognizes that its competition is kombucha. It's not another drink. Sure. Okay. So the fact is that you are talking today of the opposition recognizing that they don't have anything to really counter it. Okay? So the sadness of, of being in the opposition today is that you're relying on boredom. That's dangerous. Is that the only thing that they're looking out for, Santosh? They said, do you see an Achilles heel? What are the weaknesses of the branding and marketing strategy? Uh, actually, honestly, not easy to find because, because I think uh, they've got all their bases covered. And, and including what uh, uh, Dilip politely referred to as environmental management, which is important. Uh, I think, that particularly for 2024, I think, I mean, the only hope that the opposition has is not at the brand level, but at the level of arithmetic. The fact that you cobble together enough numbers and, and you know, you might just pip him to the post. It's, it's a long shot, but that's the, at a brand level, the problem is that, you know, I mean, it was striking that, you know, Mr. Pabar, the best thing that he could say about Rahul Gandhi was that people have started taking him seriously. That's a really low bar for a politician. I mean, if that is the best you can say about the leading opposition sort of a, a, a you know, contender. No, but isn't, doesn't that happen always? You know, when Indira Gandhi was such a strong brand, opposition struggled with uh, having a unified brand of their own, you know, to counter Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi used to always say that you know, such kind of right. slogans she, she, used to, she used to build. Is the opposition getting into the same trap again? What, what they had a problem with Indira Gandhi now uh, looking at the 2024? I think so. I think it's a similar structure in, in many ways. The fact that, see, when you're faced with a really strong leader who has mass appeal, I think, you, you know, it's very difficult unless you have, a, as, as Dilip said, a leader who's capable of, of uh, you know, challenging that. In Indira Gandhi's case, she made a mistake. So, so what you are really depending on is for the BJP to trip up. And that doesn't seem likely to happen. I mean, and that's what happened. In the Indira Gandhi's case, it is a self-inflicted kind of a, you know, for her, the fact that she announced emergency and that kick-started, in a sense, a, a groundswell of opposition. And people who were nobody became, sort of came to the fore and, and, and became, a, a, you know. Interestingly, when she announced election, nobody realized that, you know, it has actually worked against her. Exactly. When the election exactly. results came, then people realized that what she had done actually had, had actually worked against her. actually unleashed that, yes. And also, he is backed by a think tank, which is a hundred years of wanting to rule, yeah. that hunger. Yeah. Pradeep Gupta, what does the data tell you in terms of the weaknesses of brand Modi? I, I think, uh, I can't say weakness, but if at times his silence on certain matters, I would say that is something is a weakness. Like I'll tell you, in Modi 1, 14 to 19, there was cow vigilantances, you know, those, you know, he came very strongly against them. And after that, you can't see those kind of incidents. Then you saw... Pragya Thakur, Bhopal MP, she used some, you know, bad things Against about... Against uh, Gandhi. Yeah. See, he came very strongly. But Nupur Sarma case for that, but of course there was an international press. No, but sir, this is, this is really interesting. I mean, on one hand, he said that, you know, Man se kabhi maaf nahi kar paenge, but she was given a ticket, Lok Sabha ticket. She's still, you know, fighting a trial in, in, in MCOCA court. 
how do people differentiate that? You know, what she, okay. what he said about Pragya Singh Thakur and giving her a ticket and getting her elected from Bhopal. Now, that's what I'm saying, uh, Sahil. She was given a ticket before and after that she made this comment and uh, Modi and BJP was very strong against her at that point of time. So she is quite after that, you know. And uh, if you see the woman wrestler case against mm. Rajmohan, then you see the Lakhimpur Khiri case against uh, Theni. Then you see recently this Ramesh Vidudi. So I th and Manipur also. He kept silent for a very long time. He should have taken remedial action or whatever need to be. So I think had he has taken all these things also strongly, he would have been in a totally different league altogether. I would say, though still today he is, but he would have been the real statement. I Raj, what are the weaknesses you see in the branding and marketing strategy of the Prime Minister and the BJP at the moment? See, strategies, uh, I, I, mean, I'm, I always look for the, uh, is there a weakness in the product first, right? Because that's what's representative of elections. Uh, fundamentally, I feel that the, the, one of the only weakness that I see is uh, the, there is an utopian sort of aspiration for this country that is in that product, right? And that is going to be uncompromising. And sometimes in politics, there is a certain amount of compromises that you make. That the, is the only Achilles heel that I see because here's, a, here's somebody where I, and I've seen some from close quarters that will be uncompromising on some of the aspiration that the person may have for the, for the, for the larger cause. And, and that's the only thing that I see as a, a, you know, playing up as some sort of a weakness. Uh, strategies are always reinventable. I, if I may just, you know, on, on the further thought, I think one of the potential, I, I don't think it's a weakness yet, but the problem with having somebody who stars over everybody else and where there is no opposition is the fact that there is absolutely no feedback. And, and you live in a, you, your voice is heard in a vacuum. It kind of, you know, it, it dominates everything else. And, and there is the danger of, of potentially of, of what is the primary source of strength becoming a weakness. I don't see it happening yet. But I think the fact is that there is no media to tell him that, you know, yeah, what he's doing wrong. There's nobody in his party who can, you know. So this whole sense that, and there is fear. I mean, let's be very clear. Let's admit it. There is fear all around. Fear hides a lot of things. So right now, I don't think it is hiding anything. I mean, I don't think so. But potentially in the future, if, if things begin to change, it will be very difficult to discern that very often because of the fact that there is, you know, there is a sort of silence which is not... It happened any. in China, Dilip, what Santosh is saying, that Xi Jinping becomes so prom prominent and so powerful that he starts making policy mistakes and he's saying that this could be one of the concerns to be on the lookout for. It hasn't happened yet, but could potentially be a pitfall going forward. If you read between the lines of what Pradeep said, the last three episodes where there has been no reaction is because nobody has told him that on Manipur, on the wrestlers, you should respond. That's not happening. No, but can I counter that to say, it is bad strategy if it hurts you. There is no empirical evidence to suggest that it it's hurting so him. far. Yeah. Pradeep Gupta is saying what he is from his gut. He's not saying it from data. No, no, no. What I'm saying what data is, point no, no, do you no. have See, Raul, Raul, it's that. not that. There is no question of data. It's all about intent. You have to try things in the perspective. That's what your job is.